YG, we need to talk. But before that, Kill This Love giveaway is still happening. Link there and down below. This video is going to be about my experience as a VIP ticket holder. And I don't know the experience of the GA tickets or any other tickets or sound like just soundtrack alone. I, I don't know what their experience is. So this is just my experience with the VIP ticket. I'll also try to throw up some pictures and videos I got during the day to give you a little bit more context. So sit back and let's begin. Let's start with a quick rundown of my day from beginning to end. I have it actually written on my phone, so I'm going to be sort of like referencing it. So if I'm half reading, that's why. But yeah, after this, I'm going to talk about issues that I faced throughout the day. So I got there about 10 a.m. and started lining up to an already long line. And it was very cold and very windy. It took about two hours and a half or two hours and 15 to make it to the table where I get my wristband. But it turns out that they split the line right before the table and didn't know. So I was in the wrong line, but they were nice enough to still give me my, uh, my wristband without having to reline up. But either way, that took about two hours and a half. So by the time I got out of there, it was about 1230 ish. We were told to come back at about 2 p.m. to start lining up for a sound check. So I went and got some food and then I came back at about 1.45 and started lining up for sound check. The line was already as long as it was when I got there at 10 a.m. pretty much. So I was in the, like, the same spot because the line led to the roughly the same area. Eventually we got security check. I don't know how much time passed until we got to security, but we made it through security and then we were inside in like a staircase area and they just kind of lined people up. And then we waited there for some time and then eventually they opened the doors and they let us through, which we thought was a sound check, but it wasn't. They let us outside again, up some stairs and up outside to the side of the building and we waited for another period of time. And by the time we made it into the floor of, for the sound check, it was probably 15 to 30 minutes behind schedule. So that was about two hours, probably another two hours and a, and a half, I think, if I remember correctly. And when we were literally at the sound check on the floor, there was so many security guards telling you, don't record, don't film, you're going to get kicked out. I'm sure some people did, but anyways, I didn't record any. And the sound check started. It was actually very nice, albeit a bit short. They played three songs and had a little bit of just a talking thing where they just talked with us. And... That ended and the VIPs were split off from, I guess, the GA tickets. And the VIPs were led into another room. And we weren't given much instructions after that either. We were just told to wait. And they made it seem like the order mattered, which they probably thought it did at that time. But anyways, we'll talk about that later. That was probably about 5.15. And I'll have you know that by then, you're probably hungry and thirsty, especially for people who didn't go for lunch that just went right back into line for sound check after they got their wristband. So there were very grumpy people there, I would assume, and very thirsty and hungry people. They did, however, let us use washrooms, but when we asked for just drinking water, they're like, sorry, none. You can leave this area and get food or water and then come back, but you don't know if you're gonna still keep your spot in the line or if you have trouble getting back in because yeah, that's another issue. Eventually at about 6 p.m. or maybe a little past, they finally let us in for the early access to get a spot around the stage. I got a pretty decent spot and just waited for the concert to start. The concert ended up starting about 20 to 25 minutes late. During the concert, there was a girl that was very aggressive shoving, but that's a whole other issue. Anyways, the performance was great. The girls did a fantastic job and the band and the backup dancers and all the kind of like visual stuff. But once the concert ended, our VIPs are told to line up on the side of the floor to get ready for the send off. And we were lined up there for a little while until the venue pretty much emptied of all other ticket holders. And then once that happened, we were led out of the floor area and into another room, which looked like a, some sort of bar if it was operational. And we weren't given any instruction. We were just led in the room. We didn't know what was happening. We didn't know if they were coming in the room or something. We don't know. But it was very small and barely fit all of them. So 
we doubted that they would actually come through. But eventually, they led us back out into the hall where they set up fences, and that's where the girls eventually came out and did their little send-off walk kind of thing. And by the end, when they left and we were leaving, it was probably about 11.30, 11.45. So, that was a quick rundown of my day. And now I'm going to talk about the issues I faced during the day. I really don't know where to start. Maybe just with their lack of information, um, I guess. Because really, when you ask the staff, they most of them don't know anything. You can ask them one thing, they'll, be, they'll either answer you one thing, and then you ask another person, they'll answer you a different thing, or they'll just tell you straight up, tell you just, no idea, I don't know. So you're not getting any information, and nobody's telling you any information. So even if you, like, nobody's announcing anything, pretty much. They don't say, line up here for that, line up there for that, or do this, do that. Nothing. No signs. Nothing. So lack of information was throughout the entire day. One example of that is the first line when I went to pick up my wristband. Uh, I followed the people in front of me because that was apparently, according to people in the line, was a VIP and sound check line. So I followed that in and into the inside where apparently they split off VIPs and just sound check tickets, which nobody said anything, nobody mentioned anything, there's no signs, there's nobody asking who's VIP, nothing. So I followed that line and I was apparently in the sound check line, in the wrong line. So when I got to the table, the like, at least the guy there was still nice enough to give me my wristband and the VIP package. And it wasn't until after me that uh, he told another guy, in fr like another staff in front to ask for whoever's VIP and move them over. And I don't even know how often they did that or if it's just that group that was within earshot of that announcement. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a mess. And talking about the getting the wristband, there were people that were sleeping overnight outside the venue to be one of the first ones to get the wristband because I guess, um, well, even me, I thought it numbering mattered, but it turns out no, because once you get the wristband, you just leave that room and you're back outside and you're supposed to come back to line up for sound check, which is a completely different line with a completely different, like, order you can say or priority so getting that getting that first wristband or getting the wristband first meant absolutely nothing with the sound check like that that it didn't give you priority you weren't the first one in the sound check line and whatever but to make it even worse is that if you're in the first one and or if you're one of the first one in the sound check or if you happen to we moved to a staircase area that I mentioned earlier and they lined us up in like a like a zigzag pattern like this so imagine we entered and they first lined up those people and then they kind of line people up at least as far as i can tell that's what they were going for because there was no fence in between any of these or no like railings or whatever you want to call it um or at least in sections there was like little say anyways but in general it was like this so you would assume that oh that guy's the first guy that got in here and they would lead him out first and go through with the sound check whatever no turns out the doors are right here so the last people would all pile up like on this end and when this door opens all the people that came in last were the first one out so your order in the sound check line probably didn't matter either so for those people who got the wristband or slept overnight to get the wristband first and then I would assume they're also one of the first ones back in line for sound check. It still meant nothing. Like I could have came at like two o'clock and got my wristband and then walked into this area at the end here and then be the first one out for the sound check. It made no sense. There's no order. There's nothing. There's no planning at all. It's a disaster. It's just order meant nothing. And this is not the last time this something like this happens, which I'll get to now. So that was the sound check and the sound check happens and whatnot and they were delayed. So I don't know what the what happened behind the scenes or anything, but although delays aren't too like uncommon, so I'll give that a pass for now. But 
Then, after the sound check, the VIPs were led into another room. And there, we were just told to wait without really much information. And once again, we had a lineup like this. A zigzag lineup. So in, this time, we came in from here, and I'm guessing they lined up the first first person, and then so on, so on, so on. And also, oh, I forgot to mention that. When we left the sound check to get into this room, it was just a pile of people rushed to one side, and if you happen to be in front, you happen to be in front. If you happen to be back, and back, then you're the last. But then when you get to this room, it also could mean absolutely nothing. Because that line would lead here, number one person, two, three, four, five, and then kind of go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Um, and then we just sat there. And then they gave us these uh, pink or purple wristbands, which I'll show on screen because I, I don't know where it is right now, but with a number on it. And I assume that's supposed to be like a standard GA wristband or something, but I don't know why they gave us to us because we have early access. So we're the first group into the venue again, which is we go back out or back into the venue or into the floor space from where we entered this room. And guess what? There's no fence, nothing here. So when they're like, oh, we're moving, everyone just disregarded all the order again. So anyone who's here on this side, close to that way, got out first. So this line and whatever and whatever number on your wristband made no difference and no sense. So just the entire day, all the numbers, orders, how early you got there, pretty much it's just dumb luck. It's just where, what, what do you happen to be, do you happen to end up at wherever they're going to open the door next? So all the people that spent 24 hours, whatever, overnight, whatever, could have ended up on last on every single one of these. While well, we're talking about this room and kind of like going in, lining up for things, when you actually get into the building, so anytime you're in a building, there's no access to food or water. You can't even buy them. You can't even buy the overpriced venue food or water. There is no stands open. You're not even, you can't even get to the areas where there's food stands and there's just absolutely nothing. So you go through, you wait for the sound check, you do the sound check, you come out and you wait in the VIP area to go in early access. There is no water, no food and no washroom until you're in the VIP area where we're waiting in this zigzag line. Uh, that was the only time where they're like, oh, hey, you can use a washroom um, and you can keep your place in line, even though there's no fence, no nothing. And somebody could easily just take over your spot. But once again, it wouldn't have mattered anyways, because it everyone just rushed in the end. So when we're waiting there, I was dying of thirst. <laughs> me and these two other people who, who were kind of with me were also dying of thirst. It was just, we just couldn't get water because at that point we're like, maybe the numbering mattered, maybe the priority mattered. So we didn't want to leave. Um, and well, they did say you can actually leave that room and go outside and get water and food or whatever at that point. But like coming back in is probably gonna be a pain because like I said the staff doesn't know anything so you probably if you cut try to come back in if you ha run into a staff that has no idea then you probably can't get let back in um, or you have trouble and not only that is that when you're gone you don't know exactly when the the early access is gonna happen but if if you weren't there then obviously you lose your line which we still assume that we had an order, but like I mentioned earlier, it doesn't matter. Orders don't matter, lines don't matter. It's just whoever's closest to the door. So anyways, with that, people made it out. We finally made it out into the, into the thing and the show goes on. And because the show started about 20 minutes or 25 minutes late, I felt like they were a bit rushed. Like they still wanted to end on time. Like. There's there's times where it was basically like kind of like Coachella where the last note of a song is still ringing and they would start a new song. And not only that, it just felt like they 
they didn't even have much time to sort of interact with the audience. Like even the talking segment to me felt a bit rushed. Like um, like they just needed to get it done and move on, sort of thing. Like they're being pressured to just finish the show on time. But despite being pressured to finish on time, they still rocked the stage. They brought their A game. They were awesome, which is a bit of a shame because it would have been even better if they had a little bit more room and time to kind of connect with the audience. Unlike the sound check, the sound check they were much more relaxed, and it doesn't they don't do it didn't feel like they were rushed in any way, and that one just felt much nicer. And in fact, the sound check was a highlight for me. Anyways, after the forms ended, the VIPs were instructed to go to the side, and we moved to the room. And from here, we were provided no information once again. We were just in the room, and we honestly thought they were gonna walk through the room, and we we're like. That doesn't seem like a good idea because it's a very narrow, long room. We thought they're going to walk through kind of like a like a fashion show in the middle. Uh, and there's no fences. And we're like, if this happens here, that's going to be very dangerous for them. Uh, but at the same time, because they're so disorganized that we thought it was a possibility. And then we just kept waiting until somebody came back and just brought us out into the hall. And this is where another issue is. The fencing area is so small there's very few people that can get right up to the fence. There's people packed like three, four layers back. And it doesn't make any sense because if they extended that fence area, maybe doubled its length, then you could fit a lot more people at the fence and nobody would be shoving and trying to push it and everyone can get a view. But nope, it's just that. Also getting from the room to the, to the fence, there was a lot of running because everyone wanted to get a fence. Everyone wanted to get a good spot obviously and they didn't really enforce it in any way there's no lineup like there's no order to the line because if they went order to the line then nobody would be running you would just go in order you would uh, go there first one there or if you're first in line you would get the first pick of the spot but nope you have people from the back trying to run past everyone trying to get to the spot and stuff there's a lot of shoving and pushing every time when they announce the door open like back when even here lots of shoving and pushing right up to the door and I actually met somebody that got shoved onto the floor and scraped her elbows and stuff it's just terrible it's honestly terrible and lastly I'm just gonna talk about the VIP goods which uh, I think I have here we paid that much for a ticket and literally all the VIP merch is this tote bag the VIP lanyard and this bandana. Nothing else. Like, they could have easily thrown a t-shirt or a poster or something, which wouldn't even cost them much by their volume that they have to make. Probably cost them like a dollar each. But apparently people who spend like 500-ish Canadian on a ticket is not worth that. And also the VIP experience is to line up for how many hours in total? I think I probably lined up for a total of like six hours or something like that. Or or not, uh, not, not, not just line up, just waiting. Like probably like six, yeah, probably like six, seven hours of waiting in, in the day. Or maybe even more actually. Yeah, probably more. But yeah, apparently that's a VIP experience. Standing, waiting, um, also no food, no water. The people who got seats that have number would just come in. Like they can come in five minutes before the show and just sit down and not fight with any crowd. Not get shoved, not get hungry, not get thirsty. It That is like a VIP experience to me. So honestly, it was a complete mess and a disaster. This is perhaps one of the worst organized event I have ever seen. And honestly, the stupidest part about this organization, if you can call it organization, because there isn't any, is that it all could have been prevented and solved if somebody gave it a thought for even just 10 seconds. So to wrap it all up, YG, you have such a great group with Blackpink, and it's just a shame that everything around that concert leaves a bad taste. It, they are performing fantastically, but everything else is holding it back from, from other VIP members' experience, and a lot of them, I've heard that they may not come back to another VIP experience because of it. And really, that's a shame because your artists are good. It's that 
you just can't su seem to have a framework that works well for them. So here's my suggestion. One, talk with all the staff, including the local staff and your traveling staff. Get everyone on the same page because right now nobody's on the same page, not even the same book or shelf even. So just get everyone on the same page so that they can answer people's question and know what's going on and what's happening and where and how. Then let people know, let the event goers know what is going on. We don't like being in the dark. We want to know, oh, you guys are having technical difficulties. So it's delayed a little bit or whatever, or here and there and whatever, or what we need to do to make the process smoother. Let us know that. Three, separate all the tickets, tiers thing, whatever, wristbands, whatever. So VIP goes lines of VIP lines, uh, sound, check, sound check lines. It, that way you don't get a mess where, like in my case, where I ended up in the sound check line somehow because nobody was telling anything. So just separate all of them because you know the VIPs have sound check and everything and have everything below it. And same with sound check has everything below that. So it's like, it's really should be simple. You should just divide each line. Then next thing is just have a plan on managing the amount of people, make barriers. Uh, and respect the numbers if you're going to number them um, and respect if you're not going to number them respect the people who got there first the first come first serve and then follow that and just set like the fences so that people can't skip in line and with the fences set up and the people in line in order you can easily just obey the order and let them in in the correct order and not only that that would stop any kind of rush and run and running and pushing and shoving and that would be a much more pleasant experience for all the people that's there. Next is when we're waiting in line and we can't bring in food nor can we really leave for food and water then you should have a way to provide food and water while we're there and a washroom. Those are like basic commodities it's not even a VIP thing and that with a little bit of planning you can put people in areas where there is some sort of like food vendor unit in the venue or with a washroom. It's not that hard. Then the next thing is a send off for the VIP. Really just open up the fence, make it longer. So more people can get up to the fence and everyone can get a view and nobody's squishing up on other people and nobody's blocking other people. And everyone would be so much happier and have a better experience. And the VIP goods really could have been better. It's like, how stingy can you be? And we're paying so much for it. So YG, please, especially Blackpink and in their supporting artists, like backup dancer and performers and whatnot, they're working so hard. They're great. Their performance are amazing. But with this kind of organization or lack thereof does not leave a good impression. And it certainly makes people not want to come back if the experience is going to be like that again. So please stop ruining the performance with terrible organization. That's all I'm asking for. And I've even provided very simple and easy to implement ways for you to fix all of that. So I hope that somebody from YG or somebody who they're partnering with sees this and can actually do something about it. Because I'm just sad that the great performance by all the artists involved is tainted by such a shameful lack of organization.